Hello guys, Juan Hernandez for CGBoost.com. In this video, I will teach you how to control animations using a single controller. This can be useful for both hard surface and organic models, and not only it will ease the animation process, but it will also give you more control over the final result and even fix some issues that you might have when posing a model. This video is mainly for intermediate and advanced users, but as long as you have a basic knowledge of how bones and armatures work in Blender, you should be fine, so let's get to it. First, let's take a look at how this works, and then I can show you some practical examples where this can be useful. The concept is actually pretty simple. We want to make an animation which can be accessed by a controller. Anything you animate in Blender by using keyframes is saved as something called action. Actions record and contain animation data, and we are able to access and trigger that data if we want to. So how do we set this up? Let's try something simple first. In this scene I have three bones which I will use for my animation, and one extra bone which will be my controller. The action should be just a couple of frames, since the final timing will really depend on how fast you move the controller. So first I set the frame length to 20 frames, and I can start working on the animation. This is where you can get creative, do not just do a linear movement, you can play around with the timing and the way things move before getting into final position. This will make the animation nicer. Once I'm done, I go over to the dope sheet editor and change the mode to action editor. To organize my work, I rename the action data name and turn on fake user to make sure that the data is always stored in the Blender file. Now I can close the action editor go back to my timeline and reset everything to the default pose. At this point, we can connect the action to the bones and make the controller the target. We can do that using bone constraints. Go into pose mode, select one of the bones and add an action bone constraint. We need to tell Blender in which conditions the animation is triggered. Set the armature itself as the target and the controller as the bone which will trigger the action. You can now choose in which direction the controller should move to activate the action. In this case, since the bones fall down, it would make sense to move the controller down as well. Set the target to local space and the channel to the Y location. You want to work on local space so that the values are relative to the default position of the controller, and the channel really depends on the local direction of the bone controller. Then, set the range depending on how much you want to move the controller so that action is triggered. The minimum value means nothing of the action is active, and the maximum value the position in which the action is complete. In this case I want to move the controller minus one meter along the local Y axis. Finally, choose the action you want to trigger and the amount of frames that action contains. In our case it was 20 frames. Make sure it's all working correctly and then copy the action bone constraint to the rest of the bones that should be affected as well. Now that everything is working perfectly, you can improve the user experience by adding a limit location bone constraint to the controller, to make sure that you can move the controller only in the direction you need. Just make sure to set the owner to local space, turn on affect transforms, and that you keep the range you need to move the controller. Something I really like about this workflow is that the action runs on the background. So you can select individual bones and do tweaks or changes on top, or even go back to the default pose, but the bone will keep the action position. Here you can see how I apply this technique on the robot arm from my last workflow video. I created a 20 frame animation which is stored as an action. It's pretty simple, but I added some extra movement to make the opening look more complex. For example, the hand rotates a bit to the side and then rotates back. The fingers start folding until later on, parts of the weapon rotate to one side, cables inside actually scale up to cover more space, and panels turn around and back to add more movement. Same as we did before, I renamed the action, turned on the fake user, and connected the animation to the bones. Over here you can even see it's the same setting we did before. Armature as target, controller as the bone, we work in local space, in this case on the Y axis, and I use a value of 1 meter to trigger the action. I selected the action I want to trigger and the animation frame count. Lastly, I copy the constraints to the other bones and we are done. 
As you can see, the controller has a limit location as well, and the whole action is triggered on local space, so I am able to move the arm around and open the weapon on top. Another case where this can be super useful is when rigging wings. To show you how, I made this little guy over here. Closing up wings can be very time consuming, and it's something you really don't want to be doing manually every time you need to close them. Make a short animation of how the wing should fold. Something like this will probably take some more time, but believe me, it will be totally worth it. Tweak all the bone feathers and make it as good looking as possible. Once you are done, rename the action, turn on fake user, and connect it to the correct bones. In this case, I wanted to trigger the animation by scaling down the controller. That means that the minimum value is a scale of 1, and the maximum is 1.5, which is the scale I want the action to be triggered at. Another great case is rigging dragon wings. This can be very hard to do, and no matter how much weight painting you do, there is a big chance that you are going to have trouble folding the wing. Something extra you can do on top of the things we learned on this video is using a corrective shape key which activates using the same controller. So for a big part, it's the same process. We make an action, connect it to the bones, and use a controller to trigger the action. On top of that, we can add a shape key and fix the wing in sculpt mode. We can put back the shape of the arm using the smooth brush and the inflate brush, we can get rid of the intersections and make overall the final result look better. Once we are happy with it, you can add a driver to that shape key so that it activates in the same way as the action. In this case, I am moving the controller along the x-axis into the negative direction. This way, the shape key and the action will slowly activate at the same time and we will get the illusion that it folds correctly. If you have any questions or if there is anything related to Blender that you would like to know about, feel free to ask in the comment section. In case you want to take a look, both the robot and the bird are available for free at cgboost.com resources, where only an email is required. In there, you can also find our regularly updated Blender shortcut PDF. I really hope you enjoyed this video, make sure to click like and subscribe, and see you next time!